We're going to take a quick look at the Harness SRM module. It's part of the Harness software delivery platform. And one of the core functionalities is the ability to do SLO management. And in SRM, SLO management starts with monitored services. So we have a list of monitored services right here. You can see that my user ID is not authorized to create new monitored services. So we have a uh, fine grain role-based access control system in here. I'm going to go ahead and click into one of these services and we can see that we have SLOs already defined for this service. I have SLOs and error budgets. So if I am an SRE or, or anyone responsible for liability, I can come in here. I can set these up in this area and I can also view them. If I'm on the engineering team or a developer, I can also get access to come in here and view these so that I can see how things are going over time. And I'll also be able to get notifications if my error budget is draining too quickly. And it looks like there may be some type of impact to the engineering team where they're going to have to slow down. So I'm going to take a quick look at the uh, SLO as it's already been defined. So these SLOs uh, have a concept called user journeys, which are visualizations of how users interact with services. I'm going to go over to the SLI and you can see that the SLI gives you the ability to choose availability or latency metrics, threshold or ratio based SLIs. And there's analysis that's done for you as you go ahead and change these values. And then as we go over into the uh, SLOs, you can see that we have uh, SLO targets, uh, various periods that can be selected, and the error budget changes as I select my various SLO targets, or I can type in here uh, to change those. So one of the important parts also is uh, health sources for these various uh, metrics that are going to form your SLIs. So most companies have many different monitoring solutions or observability solutions in place. And I'm going to flick over to a different web page just to show you the configuration of those within Harness. You configure once and use uh, many times. But as you can see, we have many of the leading monitoring solutions as well as the ability to do custom health sources. So all of the major solutions are supported right here and anything outside of those, you can use a custom health source to support. Now that's the, the manual way of, of defining SLOs within harness. Um, you can also do those at larger scale using templates and our API that we have in place. So that was a quick overview of harness SLO management. One of the painful aspects of SLO management for SREs and, and for engineering teams alike is when error budgets burn down and the reliability team, they need to have a conversation with the developers and ask them to stop deploying new features so that they can focus on returning or restoring reliability to whatever the desired level is. So instead of manual processes in Harness SRM, we've come up with an automated process for this. So you see, I have my error budget, it's burned down and I actually have a policy inside of Harness SRM. We have uh, open policy agent or OPA. It is embedded within our solution. It's a policy as code solution. And we use that policy as code within our deployment pipeline. So let me show you that. I'm going to go ahead and try and run this payment service deployment pipeline. So I'm just going to go ahead and click a couple of things here to get this pipeline started. Now you'll notice the first thing that happened was these policy evaluations. And you can see there's this policy evaluation failure that says error budget remaining for payment service in the prod environment should be more than 95%. So I can go ahead and look at that policy and I can see that it is a uh, YAML file that contains this policy as code. And you can see right here is where we've got 95% set. So what I can do is I can go back into service reliability management. Let's say I've created the fixes and I need to go ahead and deploy the, those fixes, those reliability fixes into my production environment. I go ahead and go to reset error budget and I'm going to go ahead and, and increase the error budgets till I get over 95%. In this case, it's at 95% just for demo purposes. I can put in a reason. So this is fully audited uh, fixes and this will go ahead and update my error budget.
So now when I go back and try and run that same exact pipeline that just failed a moment ago, I hit run pipeline, and this should go ahead and execute successfully. It won't have the uh, failed policy for uh, my error budget. You can see that this is actually running and I've got a couple of other policies set that are just throwing warnings right now. So that's how within SRM we actually turn those SLOs and error budgets into automated actions that help to control your software deployment pipelines. A major challenge today is trying to identify the root cause in a short amount of time when there's a customer impacting event. We have tons of different data sources, monitoring solutions, logging solutions, observability, and Harness SRM is designed to pull in data from those and to help you identify what's really causing a problem really quickly. So let's take a look at root cause analysis in Harness SRM. You can see on my screen here, I went to service health for my monitored service, and I've jumped into a time frame where there was a service health degradation. And on the screen, you can see it's showing me that there are six changes here. I can look down below. It shows me which metrics were anomalous in case those are going to lead me to the root cause. It also does analysis on my log files, and it shows me, hey, you know what? Here are known log messages, and they have a similar count as they always have, so you can probably ignore those. Here is is a known log message, but the uh, frequency of this log message is more than it was before. So something you might want to look into. And then all of these red dots are unknown. These are new log messages that certainly could help lead you to whatever the root cause of this service degradation is. You'll also notice that we have service dependencies. So if they're upstream or downstream service dependencies, you get to see those as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into one of these changes because we know for a fact that most service degradation is caused by some sort of change event. So I'm going to jump into this change event and I can see that this change occurred right before a service degradation. And this is a Kubernetes uh, change. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm look at the YAML of that Kubernetes environment. And what we're seeing is a comparison between the previous YAML file and the current YAML file. And instead of having to dig through there manually, I see there's a red and green section of showing the differences. So I can see in the previous file, we had required three replicas. In the current file, someone changed that number of replicas down to one. So we're definitely starved for resources in this case. So it can be just that easy to, to quickly identify what changes are impacting your service health. So a major problem that SREs and developers tend to spend a ton of time working on, it can be really quick uh, to resolve within Harness SRM. One of the other things that we want to make sure happens is that uh, your reliability is constantly improving. And one of the things that's very difficult to get right is, is finding and fixing exceptions. So a Harness has, SRM has this built-in capability we call error tracking. And I'm going to show you the error tracking capability right now. You see we have an exit status of one here on this, uh, this CI pipeline build. And when I look at the, pi the pipeline itself, it failed running some tests. And you can see that some of the tests that we run are unit tests, so the code is being exercised, and most of those past two of them failed. One of the really interesting things is, is error tracking. So when these things fail, when they throw exceptions, whether they're handled exceptions or unhandled exceptions, the developers need to figure out why, what's going on, what failed. And Harness is actually able to go ahead and uh, track all of those exceptions. And you're going to see exactly what Harness is giving you for information. We're making, we're providing all of the information required for a developer to solve the exception really fast. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see a stack trace. So this is, if you're used to APM tooling, this information that you're seeing on the left-hand side where I'm circling my mouse right now, that's everything you get from the APM solution. Now, if I click on any of these, you'll see that in this big window, all of the source code appears for every one of those methods in the stack trace. So we're providing more information there already, but what's really critical here is that for all of these uh, parts of the stack, 
we actually are recording all of the variables. So these variables are what the developers need to really go ahead and fully debug what's the problem, what actually caused the exception. So we provide all of the information required for the developers to not only identify that there were exceptions, but to really rapidly get to the root cause so that they can fix their code, so they can make the, the code much more reliable as it moves on to production.